on the Exeter Sports Network. It's the PIAA 5A Boys Basketball State Quarterfinal Playoffs featuring your Exeter Eagles taking on the Peters Township Mighty Indian. Brought to you by Penn State Health St. Joseph Medical Center on the web at PennStateHealth.org. Now to the broadcast booth. Here are your announcers, Darren Ziner and Ian Kelsey. Good evening. Welcome to the Exeter Eagles Varsity Boys Basketball pregame show on the Exeter Sports Network brought to you by Jerry Gelliff Media. Today, the Exeter Sports Network in Belfont, Pennsylvania for the quarterfinal round of the PIAA 5A tournament from Bald Eagle Area High School. And it all gets started after these messages. This is the Exeter Sports Network. <laughs> Penn State Health St. Joseph is here for all of your health and wellness needs. Whether it's our primary care and specialists throughout the region, seeing you soon, our urgent care centers in Muhlenberg, Maiden Creek, and Straustown, seeing you quickly, our emergency room in Burn Township, seeing you now, or our on-demand app and walk-in lab, mammography, and imaging services, seeing you anytime. We are ready when you need us to get you back to the health you need to live the way you want. Visit PennStateHealth.org to learn more. Selling or buying a house? Call Mikey LeBron of EXP Realty. Mikey is a full-service realtor dealing in residential, business, and investment realty services. Whether it is local, statewide, national, or even international, Mikey can fulfill his real estate needs. Service to his customers is his prime focus, and that is what Mikey in the top 15% of all real estate agents in the nation. Contact Mikey LeBron at 484-772-5106 or on the web at myagentmikey.com. Oly Valley Feed is the area's best place for pet food, supplies, and so much more. Featuring all the prime brands and your pet's favorite food, they also have a customer loyalty program that can pay you back in free pet food on the many products, plus chew toys, women supplies, and snacks. Oly Valley Feed carries a full line of bird food and syrup, as well as coal and wood pellets to keep you warm this winter, which are available for delivery. All this and unmatched customer service. That's Oly Valley Feed, 133 Cleaver Road in Oly. On the web at Oly Valley Feed. Joined in the Exeter Sports Network booth by Ian Kelsey, the birthday boy jubilant Jerry Gellar. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Darren Zayn. We had to throw that in there to get started. Friends, here we are, Exeter coach Matt Ashcroft, the District 3 champs, 25-6 and six overall. If you hadn't already heard, it's the most wins at Exeter since a 30-3 and three record by the 73-74 team. Last Thursday at Mannheim Township, Exeter played even ball in the first half, a dominant second, Ian, and a 66-49 win over Mechanicsburg. We absolutely... Uh, Mechanicsburg came out a little 
of a different energy in the first half. Josh Smith was causing Exeter a lot of trouble going in that game. But in the second half, it was a completely different story, and Exeter's defense and offense really stepped up. As you mentioned, Josh Smith bombing away from the outside. He single-handedly kept the Wildcats in the game, scoring seven of their nine first quarter points. Exeter would lead 12-9 after one. But, Ian, they had a 10-2 lead at the start. We were hoping they would keep their foot on the pedal. They're going to have to do that tonight. They're definitely going to have to do it, Darren. They cannot get, a, get out to a good start and then slow back and start turning the ball over and being sloppy with the ball entry, entry into Anthony and not being aggressive with the guards. So if they do that against um, in Peters Township, they might be in a little bit of trouble. So they have to keep their foot on the pedal. That's right. In fact, the balance scoring for that game, it's something Exeter is, has become known for. This time, Reese Garvin leading the charge, finishes with 21. He had nine at the break, three threes to that point, five on the night. Ian, you know, you take a look at it, even just first half scoring, Anthony had seven, Kevin had six, three others were in the scoring column, and then they come out in that third quarter, outscoring... Uh, Man, uh, outscoring them 18-6 and it, it essentially closed the door. Their defense really came out with a different energy in the first in, in the second half of that game because Josh Smith, like I said, was getting to every spot on the floor that he could. He could pass it, he was shooting it, he was he was just doing whatever he wanted to do. And whatever adjustment Coach Ashcroft made at halftime coming out, it was a completely different story. He only had five points in the second half of that game. That's right. They would get no closer than ultimately three points. They actually knocked it down to one late uh, as far as in that third. But, but Exeter, again, putting their foot on the gas, outscoring them 18-6 in that one. And they outscored him 20-15 in the fourth to win, of course, going away. Mention Reese Garvin, his 21 points. Anthony finishes with 15. Kevin 11. Zion 10. Four in double figures. Teddy adds seven. Aiden Darvel chips in a bucket. And that's the kind of scoring they're going to need tonight against a very talented Indians team. A very talented Indians team that knows how to get to the rim, knows how to shoot the ball. Very aggressive on offense with Dunbar and... Um, and the color. We are very talented and you know, along with those 21 points by Reese, he also had no rebounds. Along with Anthony who had a double double with 15 and 12. Um, they, that's the way they're going to have to continue to play today to win this beat this Indian team. Talking about the Indians, they're coached by Joe Ehrman. He's in his third season at Peters Township. 36 and 26 overall in case you wondered. They hail from McMurray, PA, a suburb of Pittsburgh. And as a side note, they traveled 166 miles to get here tonight, Exeter 149. So although I may not necessarily say kudos to the PIAA for finding a neutral site, but essentially tonight they did, which is certainly a plus. So the Indians come into tonight's game 24-4 and overall. They got to tonight's game defeating the Pioneers of Lampeter Stroudsburg 58-56. They advanced to the quarterfinals for the first time since 1997. And Ian, when we talk about the Indians, junior forward Jack Dunbar, he'll lead the charge. He's a, he's a load. He, he, he's a big kid. He knows how to get to the rim. He knows how to do his pull-up jumper. He can come off his screens. He can do a lot of different things in the basketball floor. But Exeter is definitely going to be after where, where, where he's at. Dunbar is a six foot two inch junior forward. Listen to these numbers. He had earlier in the season a game of 41 that included seven threes, a second with 37, and of course another with 29. So Exeter will have to get out on the perimeter. The Indians have four others that ultimately can put the ball in from deep. 5'11", senior guard Brendan McCullough. He averages 15. Dunbar averages 18. And Ian, as a team, they average 73 points a game. So Exeter will have to find a way to slow them down. They're going to have to find a way. But Exeter's defense has always been solid. And with top scorers that we'll face during this postseason, this district, and in the states. And we're even doing regular season with Ruben and all these other guys from Springfield. I think that our defense is up to the task tonight. 
on defense. Expect the Indians to play man-to-man -man initially, but like Coach Ashcroft, Coach Ehrman isn't afraid to make those in-game adjustments. So if it is something where they'll try to bring the backside in to double Anthony down low, he won't be afraid to change that up if Exeter burns him early, and we'll see how it plays out. I just think that our guards is going to play a critical role in this game tonight. I've watched the Indians play a few games, and I've had a lot of trouble keeping fast and quick guards out of the paint and from scoring. So we'll see what happens. We are getting ready for the starting five on each team in about 30 seconds. You'll hear a buzzer, but for Peters Township, and we'll call him Township throughout the course of the game. Well, and it looks like we'll do the national anthem first and we'll go silent. For the Indians, the starters, number two, Brendan McCullough, number three, Nate Miller, number 14, Cam Mills, number 15, Jake Ziegler, and number 45, the aforementioned Jack Dunbar. As far as Exeter is concerned, we will expect to see Zion Paschal, Kevin Sens, Reese Garvin, Anthony Cachese, and probably Teddy Snyder to get things going. Going through the starting lineups right now, and one thing that we notice, Ian, is Peters Township doesn't necessarily have the height, but they do have a lot of ball movement on offense. Look for them to drive maybe left to right to the hoop. If it's not there, if Anthony makes them change their shot, they'll kick it out for the three. Exeter's going to have to play very disciplined defense and keep a hand in those faces. They're definitely going to have to play disciplined defense, be connected to their shooters, and know exactly where these guys and cannot lose them on, on the, on the back side, on the, on the back cuts. We talk about some keys to the game. The first is, of course, fouls. It's something that's plagued Exeter in the last game. Zion and Anthony got some fouls early. Then, of course, they had to be careful. Coach Ashcroft likes to keep them out there. Ultimately, if they get three and four, uh, they play a little more disciplined, maybe not as aggressive. So Ian Fouls could be a big factor here, especially when the Indians hit free throws at almost an 80% clip. They have to be well disciplined on defense, sliding their feet, and keeping the man in front of them. And you cannot be having Reese and Kevin and, and Anthony and Zion picking up all the foul troubles that we're in a bad situation in this game. We've got eight minutes up on the clock. Exeter in their white jerseys, blue number and lettering with blue trim. The Peters Township Indians in red jerseys 
white numbering, white trim. They await Exeter as Exeter is breaking the huddle. Jake Ziegler will tip it off against Anthony Cachese. Waiting for the official to walk in. He's got the ball. Township going left to right. Of course, Exeter right to left. Waiting for the tip off. It's in the air. Ultimately, it's tipped to Zion Paschal, and Exeter will start with it. Hands it off to Reese Garvin, gets it right back from him. But hands it to Teddy Snyder, but Teddy Snyder's too deep on the far corner, and he steps out of bounds. So a turnover for Exeter. I think that one caught Teddy off guard. He wasn't expecting it. Here's McCullum bringing the ball up. Rotated to Dunbar on the left. Here's a drive in the paint from Nate Miller. He goes up strong and scores. The Indians are up 2-0, and they incorporate a press. Miller all over sends as he crosses midcourt. He hands it off to Zion Paschal. McCullough comes out to guard him. Reese Garvin right to left. They get it to Kevin Sens on the far right. He's looking to drive. Steps for a three. No good. Cachese with the rebound, though. Kicks it out to Reese Garvin. He stops for a three. That's no good. Mills runs it down for the Indians, and here they come. McCullough has it. Looking to drive. Sends and Snyder stop him. Here he goes in the paint. Gets it inside to Dunbar. Nothing there. Back it back out to McCullough. And he backs it out, and they're going to set it up again. Here's McCullough driving. Kevin Sends <laughs> catches him with the body as he gets to the wing. They call the foul. It'll be on Kevin. It's on the floor. It'll be his first, and the Indians will bring it in to the right of the bucket. Yeah, that's an early foul that we cannot be picking up on. Side your feet and get in the right position to play, play defense. The Indians bringing the ball in. Miller's looking, guarded by Teddy Snyder, looking, throws it deep. Dunbar has it. Zion Paschal on him. He tries to drive, ultimately puts up a jumper outside of the free throw line. No good. Paschal with the rebound, looks over to Coach Ashcroft for the play. Sets it up. Dunbar comes out on Paschal. Get it to Reese Garvin. He gives a nice backdoor pass to Kevin Sins, but he's too far under the bucket. Here comes Dunbar the other way. Puts up a soft shot on the fast break, but no good. Reese Garvin has it. Outlets to Zion Paschal on the left. He's got the dribble. Decides to go lane. A floater in the lane. No good. Cachese with the rebound. Can't get it to fall, but he gets it again. Puts it back up and scores. Yep. At the other end here is Dunbar driving. He wants, he throws it up and wants the bucket. That is not a continuation. But it's, that's right, no continuation. Zion tried to drive, or tried to take the offensive foul. But they don't give it to him. It'll be his first. The Indians will bring the ball into the right of their own basket. Looking, looking, looking. Dylan Donovan in the game. Here's a long three from Thomas Aspinall. Goes out of bounds, though. Nobody touches it, and it's Exeter ball. So here's the first thing. The Indians do go deep. Looking out there, they've brought three new players into the game. Aspinall, Donovan, previously mentioned. Here's Kevin Sens on the drive, going against... Going against Dunbar, can't get it to fall, but there's Anthony Cachese with the rebound and the putback. Exeter's got to make sure that they get back on defense when they score because they're ready to push the ball right away. McCullough has the dribble on Kevin Sens, but Kevin doing a great job keeping him out of the paint. Dunbar has it. He's trying to drive on Pasha, but Pasha's not giving him anything. Dunbar loses it. Somehow they call it that Zion Paschal got a hand on it, but I don't think that was the case. I'm going to say that was off Dunbar, but needless to say, the Indians have it. Donovan's going to bring it in, gets it to Dunbar. Zion Paschal on him, decides to spot up for a three on the right side, and he hits it. There's the three prowess that we know is out there. It's a 5-4 township lead, 5.05 to go here in the first. 
Kevin Sens has an entry pass inside to Cachese. He tries to spin, can't get it to fall. Ultimately, Vicky Vaccarello gets the rebound, and as Anthony's battling for it, they call him for the foul. That'll be his first, and again, Ian, something they're gonna have to be careful about. Well, we, we see how this game is going already, and I like, listen, we whistle on, on one side of the court the whole time already, so I'm hoping these referees balance these calls out. Miller back in the game, sends on him. They're rotating it around three on the left side. Donovan has it, looking for the dribble against Snyder, puts up a floater in the lane, no good. Cachese gets the rebound, outlets it to Zion Pasho, gets it ahead to Sens, who tries to get it to Reese Garvin. It bounces out to Teddy Snyder, no good. And as Dunbar tries to save it, he actually throws it against the backboard. It goes out of bounds. So it'll be Exeter ball. We have to continue to play really aggressive on the defensive end, but be smart at the same time. Zion Pasho gives it to Cachese. He puts up a three left corner and hits it. His first three on the night. That's a travel. Here is McCullough, who lost his balance in the lane, shuffles his feet. It's a travel, a turnover, an Exeter ball. 7-5 Exeter, 4.20 to go here in the first. Sens has the dribble. Miller on him. They try to double him. Fire it inside. Here's Reese Garvin working. Backing out to Kevin Sens. He drives. Nice pass inside. Anthony Cachese off the glass and he scores. That was really great ball movement. Quick on, on, on the ball movement and get an easy layup. Vaccarello has the dribble looking to do something on Cachese. Absolutely nothing there. He just bodies him up and takes him out of the play. Hand it off to Miller, who drives against Teddy Snyder, is able to get it up off the glass and scores. Four points for him, a two-point Exeter lead. Kevin Sens has the dribble, Miller on him. He gives it up to Zion Paschal. Aspinall guarding him, looking left to right. Reese Garvin pops out, goes back. Aspinall trying to stay with Ooh. Trying to stay with Zion Paschal. He does a nice job until Zion gets by him. Not able to get the layup to fall, but he is fouled. He'll go to the line for two. Right. right now, they're really playing really hard on the defensive end. We've got a timeout on the floor. 3.20 to go here in the first. 9-7 Exeter. We'll be back. It's the Exeter Sports Network. State Health St. Joseph is here for all of your health and wellness needs. Whether it's our primary care and specialists throughout the region seeing you soon, our urgent care centers in Muhlenberg, Maiden Creek, and Straustown seeing you quickly, our emergency room in Burn Township seeing you now, or our on-demand app and walk-in lab, mammography, and imaging services seeing you anytime. We're ready when you need us to get you back to the health you need to live the way you want. Visit PennStateHealth.org to learn more. Back to the game on the Exeter Sports Network. Well, Ian Early, it's been Anthony Cachese. He has six of the nine Exeter points, so they haven't found a way to shut him down. Anthony's missed a couple close shots inside, but thus far, he's been open and available. Six points with five rebounds, and he's really been active on the defensive glass, really, really working hard. So they have to continue to be aggressive with the guards and continue to find Anthony to get him easy shots. Zion Pasha will get two on that drive to the bucket. He's got the ball, a few dribbles. Takes a look, it's on the way. It's short, it's short no good. Zion awaiting the ball again. Short again. Second on the way, it bounces off, no good. Zion hitting free throws at 70%. Can't get either of those two to fall. Indians in the offensive set. Ultimately, a weave beyond three. Trying to get an 
inside, but here's a turnover from Mills. Alex Kelsey has it. Get it to Zion Paschal. Nice pass inside to Kevin Sens. He puts it off the glass and scores. That's Kevin's first bucket. He's got two. It's a four-point Exeter lead. Here's McCullough driving against Alex Kelsey. They're going to count the bucket on continuation. It'll be Alex's first. And they'll send McCullough to the line for one. They're running that high pick and roll, and we got to be aware of who's picking up the man on the, on, on the cut. McCullough will get one. A few dribbles, takes a look. It's in the air. It's short. Alex Kelsey has the rebound. Pushes it up court. He's got the dribble, backs it out. Taking a look, here's Zion Paschal on the right coming off the screen. Get it inside to Anthony Cachese. They try to bring the backside double with Jake Ziegler, but he knocks it out of bounds. So Exeter will retain. So we have to be aware of that backside double down on Anthony because they, that's what all, most of these teams have been doing on him recently. Zion Pasha looks, gets it to Anthony Cachese. He's looking to drive. Ultimately, goes right by. He goes right by Cam Mills, but he can't get two shots to fall. The Indians have it. Here's McCullough trying to drive the lane. He gets shut down. Give it to Mills. He backs it out. Sets up the offense again. McCullough has it, looking to drive on Kelsey, but that's shut down. Here he drives in the lane, puts up a soft floater, and scores. McCullough's second bucket on the night. He's got four. We're tied at 11. Two minutes to go here in the first. Alex Kelsey has the dribble. They try to double him. He gets it ahead to Zion Pasha. Back out to Reese Garvin for a three, and he drills it. Reese Garvin with five threes. In the last game, hits the first one. Here's a three at the other end. Cam Mills no good. They battle for it. And ultimately decide that it's township ball. They'll bring it in from the near side. The three considerably short had a long rebound. Exeter couldn't corral it. And the Indians will bring it in. St. Peter's Township is really moving the ball around the top really well. And they're really finding their cutters going to the basket. Mills gets it in. Dunbar has it. Passion all over him as Dunbar tries to make a move. He loses his footing. The ball goes out of bounds off him. And it's Exeter ball. Zion doing a great job bodying him up. That's the second time we've seen that. Kevin Sens has the dribble right up the middle of the floor. Decides to go right to the rack. Can't get it to fall. Anthony battles for it. But ultimately, Mills comes up with it. Gives it to McCullough. He travels. They don't call it. Ultimately, Mills now trying to spin. He loses the ball, but they're going to call Alex for his second. I'd say that offensive set shouldn't have happened. McCullough certainly traveled. Coach Ashcroft even trying to tell him. And the Indians fans to my left, quite vocal, telling Ashcroft to have a zoo. They bring it into McCullough. He's got Kevin Sens, a high pick on him. Ultimately, the pick was moving. Vaccarello setting it. But ultimately, Mills ends up with it. Kevin Sens has him. He tries to drive on the left side. Goes up with a shot. Sens chasing him. He's called for the foul. Mills will go to the line and Ian early, just like it was with Josh Smith. He was able to get around the guards and rack up some early fouls. It's six to one of the fouls right now. We've got to do a better job. I mean, we're not sliding your feet fast enough and cutting off the angles to get into the basket. And it's killing us on the, on the, on the fouls. Miller's first free throw, no good. We have to be a little more disciplined on the defensive end. We've played better defense than this. Come on. Nate gets the ball for the second. It's in the air. This one good. 103 on the clock. First quarter, 14-12 Exeter. Reese Garvin will bring it in. The Indians will incorporate the press. Dunbar will take Reese Garvin. He looks, gets it to Kevin Sens. McCullough on him. Dribbling, dribbling, crossing midcourt. Gets it to Reese Garvin on the left-hand side. He looks for Anthony, gives him a bounce pass. 
Anthony gets it back out to Sens, hands it off to Zion Paschal. Looking to drive, gets a high pick. Here's an 18 foot jumper right side and he hits it. Great shot, way to be patient on that screen and coming off that screen and hitting that jumper. Five points for Zion Paschal. We're at 30 seconds to go here in the first. Ultimately the Indians in the offensive set. Donovan tries to drive, hands it off. Here's a drive against Anthony Cachese. Nicky Vaccarello gets it off the glass with his left hand scores. 16-14 Exeter. Winding down to 10 seconds left in the quarter. Alex Kelsey has the dribble. Gets it to Zion Pasha who's all alone. Goes in. Nice head fake. He'll draw the foul. Can't get it to fall. Go to the line for two. He's got some it's vocal fans. It's getting a little bit ruckus in here. This might not be that many, but it's it's loud. <laughs> Nothing we haven't seen before. <laughs> Nothing we haven't seen before. We've seen a ruckus crowd before. So Zion Paschal on the line. The first one up and good. As we mentioned, Zion hitting him at 70%. Hits the first. They've been seeing their free throws a lot better. They just have to continue doing that in this game. Six seconds on the clock, 17-14 Exeter. Zion has one more, a few dribbles. It's on the way, bounces around, it's no good. McCullough has the rebound pushing it. He's gonna try to get up a shot, puts up a long three and he hits it. That, is, that was bad defense on all part. McCullough hits the three at the buzzer and we are tied at 17 after one. Well, we will take it to the birthday boy, Jerry Gellif. Had to get that in there. We'll be back Thank after you. one, tied at 17. It's the Exeter Sports Network. Penn State Health St. Joseph is here for all of your health and wellness needs. Whether it's our primary care and specialists throughout the region, seeing you soon, our urgent care centers in Muhlenberg, Maiden Creek, and Straustown, seeing you quickly. Our emergency room in Burn Township, seeing you now. Or our on-demand app and walk-in lab, mammography, and imaging services, seeing you anytime. We're ready when you need us to get you back to the health you need to live the way you want. Visit PennStateHealth.org to learn more. Now let's get back to the room with the Exodus Sports Network. 17 all after one. Zion Pasha, Anthony Cachese leading the charge with six. For the Indians, Brendan McCullough on the strength of that buzzer beating three. He's got seven. Nate Miller, five. Jack Dunbar adds three. We, we, we had to do a better job closing out on that, on that last shot. We, we, the man, but Alice's hand was down at the side, not, not closing out. Mills has the dribble. The Indians inbound it to get the second quarter started. Aiden Gobble in the game now for Exeter. Here's a drive on the left side by Mills against Anthony Cachese. Goes up with the left hand, gets it to fall. Two-point lead, Alex Kelsey at the other end, drives all the way to the hoop. They get it ahead to Dunbar on the fast break after the Exeter miss, and he scores. Five for Dunbar, it's a four point Exeter, excuse me, Indians lead. They break the press. Reese Garvin gets it back, puts up a three, it's strong, no good. An ill-advised shot there. Here's a drive, Miller goes in, can't get it to fall. They battle for it. Ultimately, Ziegler ends up on the floor as does Zion Paschal. No fouls were called. Looked like there was a lot of contact, I'll say, both ways right there. It was a and they ultimately of give the ball to the Indians. That could have been a mercy call right there because they didn't actually call the foul. So they figured, well, we blew that one. We'll give them the ball. So the Indians bring it in. Get it deep. Here's a long three from Mills, no good. They're running it down. Zion Paschal had position. He ultimately will draw the foul against Nate Miller. Like they're grabbing arms and it's, wow. 
6.57 to go here in the second. 21-17 Township. Exeter will bring it in midcourt near side. Reese Garvin gets it to Zion Paschal. He's got the dribble right to left. McCullough picks him up. Looks for a high pick from Kelsey. Decides to drive by. Here's a jumper. Nice job. 20 feet right wing and he hits it. Eight points for Zion Paschal. It's a two point Peters Township lead. Dunbar drives on the right side. Ultimately got Zion Paschal in the air. He can't get it to fall. They'll call the foul on Alex Kelsey. That's going to be his third. He'll probably take a seat. That is the seventh team foul for Exeter. That's three quick fouls in less than five minutes. That's, that's a big problem. Dunbar's first free throw up short off the front of the rim. Yeah. Yeah, we got to play real smart right now, just trying to keep ourselves out of these out of these foul troubles that have been plaguing us the whole this whole playoffs. Dunbar has one more. He gets the ball from the official. A few dribbles. It's in the air, and he hits it. One out of two from the line for Dunbar. He's got six, and it's a three-point Township lead at 22-19. 6:25 to go here in the second. Here's Zion Paschal trying to drive on McCullough, but he gets blocked. Ultimately, McCullough thinks he took a charge, but they're going to call him for the foul. I think that's a good foul. He's sliding his feet, trying to get in front. I love the Indians fans right now because they want every call to go their way. And it's amazing. You know what? You can't, can't, and I won't knock him for that. <laughs> So ultimately, Zion Paschal tries to get it to Teddy, but Dunbar gets it, able to get it ahead to Nate Miller, who finishes the fast break. He's got seven. It's a five-point township lead. Aiden Dorble gets it to Reese Garvin. He spots up a three near side and hits it. Reese's second three on the night. He's got six. It brings Exeter within two at the other end. McCullough drives on Teddy Snyder. Not there. Reese Garvin with the rebound. He's got the dribble up court. Taking a look inside. Get it to the right side. Teddy Snyder spots up for a three. It's in and out. But Aiden Doble comes up with it after Anthony Cachese gets it loose. And he scores. His first bucket. We are tied at 24. 5.30 to go here in the second. Indians in the offensive set. Mills brings it. Ultimately, Dunbar has it. A cutter in the middle. Cam Mills puts up a shot. Anthony Cachese will have nothing to do with that. Swats it out of bounds. Nice block. The Indians will bring it into the right under their own basket. Exeter just has to weather this storm right now because I'm like, this team is not going to go away. So they have to just keep on and keep it close until they can take the lead and take control of this game. The Indians bring it in. It's a long lob for Dunbar. Zion Pasha bodying him up. Doesn't give him anything. He puts up a jumper right wing and scores. He's a really good scorer, man. Eight points for Dunbar. Here's Zion Pasha on the offensive set. Get it back to Teddy Snyder. A 20-foot jumper outside free throw line. No good. Rebounded by Dunbar trying to push the issue. He absolutely annihilates Zion Pasha. They're going to call Zion for the blocking foul. It was a good attempt to get in front of him. I think that's a good foul. He didn't necessarily have his position locked. Now he was still sliding. He was still definitely still sliding down there. So the second foul on Zion. 18 fouls for Exeter. So Dunbar goes to the line in the act of shooting. So he'll get two. Hits the first. Two out of three from the line thus far. Coaches in the western part of the state must not talk at all. These people are yelling, tee him up at about, at about Ashcroft. <laughs> yeah. Dunbar awaits the ball. Coaches to sit down. Five minutes to go. The second on the way, no good. Anthony Cachese with the rebound. But as he tries to get it to Reese Garvin, he throws it away. Aspinall gets it back out. Here's a three attempt from Miller. Can't get it. Vaccarello get the rebound. He can't put it back. And Exeter has the rebound. Zion Pasha with the dribble. 
Reese Garvin in the middle of the floor beyond three. He looking, he's got a cutting back door to Aiden Garvin, but Vaccarello able to block it as Dunbar tries to bring it up the court. It's knocked away from him. Zion Pasha runs it down. He's one-on-one -on -one with McCullough. Florida in the lane, eight feet, and he scores. Ten points for Zion Pasha. It's a one-point Indians lead. 4-10 to go here in the second. McCullough has the dribble, sends out on him. Aspinall on the far left side, double guarding him. Bring it near side to Miller. Reese Garvin on him, tries to drive, he shuts it down. And ultimately a 30 second timeout. So even as we've been talking, Exeter doing a better job. There are some defensive lapses, but at least they're keeping them from hitting the three, but they are allowing the drive. They're, allow they're allowing the drive, and they're being really aggressive. Um, St. Um, Peter Township getting to the paint and making their shots and making their free throws. So Exeter are going to have to start cutting those lanes off. For the Indians, looking at their scoring, Dunbar is coming alive. He's got 10. Brendan McCullough, Nate Miller, 7 each. So the balance scoring that Exeter has with Zion 10, Reese 6, Anthony 6. The Indians are matching that right now. They're matching it, but Anthony is really working hard on the, on, on, on the defensive glass and getting, and getting the team extra shots on the offensive glass. But we've got to start making better decisions on the defensive end. Dylan Donovan in the game now for the Indians. They're in the offensive set. Donovan ultimately gets it. Looks like he'll run the show. Stops, puts up a 20-footer from the wing. Can't get it, but Vaccarello has the rebound. Sends it out for a three. No good. And as they battle for it, they're going to call a foul on the Indians. And we've got a timeout on the court. It is 27-26 Township. 3.36 to go, and we will go to jubilant Jerry Gallup, the birthday boy. It's the Exeter Sports Network. buying a house? Call Mikey LeBron of EXP Realty. Mikey is a full-service realtor dealing in residential, business, and investment realty services. Whether it is local, statewide, national, or even international, Mikey can fulfill your real estate needs. Service to his customers is his prime focus, and that is what Mikey in the top 15% of all real estate agents in the nation. Contact Mikey LeBron at 484-772-5106 or on the web at Mikey. MyAgentMikey.com This is the Exeter Sports Network. Township outscoring Exeter 10-9 to this point. We've played just about half of this second quarter. Reese Garvin will bring it in for Exeter. Full court. The Indians applying full court pressure. Exeter has to do a better job. When they're closing out, they got to get a hand up in the guy's face. They're closing out with their hands on the side. They have to do a better job of that. Inbounded to Kevin Senzi. Gets it back to Reese, who gets the dribble all the way up. He's looking. Gets it to Cachese inside. Back it out to Reese for a three, and he drills it deep right. Reese is third. Three on the night. He's got nine, and the Eagles a two-point lead. Here's a drive left to right. From Cam Mills, no good. Exeter with the rebound. Outlet to Zion Pasha. He thinks about it. Now he's going to back it out. Coach Ashcroft sets up the play. Hands it off to Kevin Sens. McCullough guarding him. Looks for Zion Pasha on the right side. Zion gets it inside to Anthony Cachese. Thinks about a double. Turns around to try to get it in. No good. Rebounded by the Indians. Ultimately, the drive, the entire length of the floor. Nick McCullough. Nick McCullough able to get the bucket. We are tied at 29 with 2.30 to go here in the second. Reese Garvin. Aiden Dauber back over to 
Zion passionately tried a soft pass into Kevin Sins, almost had it stolen. Here's Kevin Sins spotting up for a 20-foot jumper, wing, the wing right he hits it. Sins with four on the night. The Indians in the offensive set. Defense! 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 Ultimately rotating it around three, back in McCullough's hands on the left, sends on him. Tries to drive on him, ultimately turns around for a soft floater, 15 feet left, and he hits it. Brenda McCullough, again. He's got nine. Here's Reese Garvin driving to the hoop, lays it off the glass, scores! He's fouled and go to the line for one. Way really to be aggressive, Reese. Not just selling for that jumper, but also attacking the rim and getting to the into the free throw line. They give the foul to Jake Ziegler. Nice aggressive move by Reese, taking it to the rack, getting the layup, and he's on the line for one. It's in the air, it bounces around, and it's good. Reese in double figures with 12. The Indians in the offensive set. Reese Garvin comes from behind, steals it, gets to Aiden Garvin who spots up. Three three on the right side and he drills it. Aiden Garvin with five. It's a six point Exeter lead. 1.20 to go here in the second. Miller trying to drive on Reese Garvin. Can't get it to fall. They battle for it. McCullough gets the rebound. He's dribbling against Kevin Sins, trying to take it to the basket. Cachese comes over and is able to block it. And ultimately, not exactly sure. I guess they said that somebody was standing on the end line. There was no foul called. Uh, not exactly sure why they're giving the ball back to the Indians. I think they're saying Cachese was out. Anthony yeah, Taylor. apparently it looked like though he was under the basket. So the Indians bring it in. Back it out to McCullough. Dunbar has it. He's trying to drive the lane. Here's a floater. It's short. Zion Pasha with the rebound. He's pushing the issue on the right side. Ultimately looking, trying to drive. Gets underneath. Puts up a shot. It's wild. No good. They battle for it. Kevin Sens comes up with it. It's still loose on the floor. The Indians come out with it. Dunbar and McCullough drive it. Reese Garvin blocks the shot. They try to get it ahead to... Zion Paschal, he saves it, gets it to Kachese, backs it out to Sens. He'll slow it down, 25 seconds to go, and Exeter calls timeout. That was one heck of an effort. That was Reese Garvin showing you his athleticism, coming out of nowhere from behind, getting the block. 25.6, we'll keep it right here, 37-31 Exeter. But I'll tell you what, Ian, in the last three minutes, Exeter's defense ramped up a little bit. They're still getting some drives. Anthony doing a nice job sliding over. Reese, uh, the last couple possessions on defense, has done a real nice job as far as that last block. All they need to do is continue that aggressive. They need to continue that aggressiveness. Reese coming on, giving the steal. Reese coming and hustling his tail back to just make that block so he doesn't have an easy layup. And the defense is really starting to crank up now. So let's get into halftime and keep this lead. Coach Ashcroft emphatic as he talks to his players in that huddle. Anthony Cachese has a word with the official, kind of smiling a little bit. Reese Garvin will bring it in near side midcourt. He's looking, looking, gets it to Zion Paschal. He's got the dribble. Aspinall guards him. He'll give it up. No, he won't. He'll keep the dribble far right side. He stops, he looks, Reese Garvin comes out for it. Far right, get it back to Aiden Garble. Bring it over to Zion Passion, who thinks about it. Now he's gonna drive right to the hoop and he scores. 12 moves. And as the Indians are bringing it in. He stepped over the line. Yep, Nate Miller steps over the end line while holding the ball. They call him for the violation. It is a turnover for Peters Township, and Exeter will have it. This could be a huge play against he pushes to a 11-point lead. Two and a half seconds on the clock. Zion Pasho gets it into Anthony, who puts up a floater in the lane. No good! Zion Pasho had an opportunity, but they wave it off. 
Needless to say, we have played one half here at Bald Eagle Area High School, it's Exeter 39, Peters Township 31. We'll be back with the halftime show after these messages. You're listening to the Exeter Sports Network on Jerry Gallup Media. State Health St. Joseph is here for all of your health and wellness needs. Whether it's our primary care and specialists throughout the region seeing you soon, our urgent care centers in Muhlenberg, Maiden Creek, and Straustown seeing you quickly, our emergency room in Burn Township seeing you now, or our on-demand app and walk-in lab, mammography, and imaging services seeing you anytime. We are ready when you need us to get you back to the health you need to live the way you want. Visit PennStateHealth.org to learn more. Selling or buying a house? Call Mikey LeBron of EXP Realty. Mikey is a full-service realtor dealing in residential, business, and investment realty services. Whether it is local, statewide, national, or even international, Mikey can fulfill your real estate needs. Service to his customers is his prime focus, and that is what Mikey in the top 15% of all real estate agents in the nation. Contact Mikey LeBron at 484-772-5106 or on the web at myagentmikey.com. Only Valley Feed is the area's best place for pet food and supplies and so much more. Featuring all the prime brands and your pet's favorite food. They also have a customer loyalty program that can pay you back in free pet food on many products. Plus, chew toys, grooming supplies, and snacks too. Only Valley Feed carries a full line of bird food and suet, as well as coal and wood pellets to keep you warm this winter, which are available for delivery. All of this in unmatched customer service. That's Only Valley Feed. 143 Cleaver Road in Oldie. On the web at OldieValleyFeed.com and on Facebook. Back to the game on the Exeter Sports Network. We are back in the telling story of that second quarter. At the 345 mark, Exeter had been outscored 10-9. to The final 345, they go on a 13-4 run to take an 8-point lead at 39-31. 13-4 run on their defensive effort by the steal from 
from Reese to that block shot. I mean, he's, he saved us like probably about four to six points just by his defense, if ever, and being able to run the, car, the court and push the ball and get easier shots. Taking a look at scoring for that first half for Exeter, Zion Paschal, Reese Garvin leading the way 12 apiece, Anthony Cachese 6, Aiden Dauble 5, Kevin Sens 4. For Peters Township, taking a look here, Jack Dunbar, Brendan McCullough, 9 each, Nate Miller, 7, Cam Mills adds a bucket, he's got 2, as do Mickey Vaccarello and Nick McCullough with two each. And the big key coming into this game, we knew that the Indians could put it in from the outside. And to Exeter's credit, only two threes for the Indians in that yeah. first half. They were really covering the outside, keeping them off the three-point line and making them run to the basket. But they're getting them in the paint a little bit too easy until that last three and a half minute in the second half when they started clamping on the middle and Anthony start coming over and, and blocking those shots and he's coming over to help. Indeed, two things that stand out in that first half. Number one, Anthony did have a couple opportunities. I think there were a few that he rushed a little bit as far as trying to get it in the bucket, uh, ultimately causing or leading up to two of those fouls that he has. Uh, Zion, the other thing too, Zion versus Dunbar. Uh, Dunbar, we knew even just watching his shot, it's a sweet shot, but holding him uh, as he did in check, he only hit one three in that first half. Zion doing a great job keeping him at the perimeter and getting a hand in his face. He's absolutely doing a great job. The kid is, is bigger than Zion. I mean, he's probably stronger than Zion, but he, he's, he's moving his body and he's moving his feet and keeping him contained so he can't get around him. And it's, all his shots are d difficult shots, but he's making them. But overall defense with Zion on, on Dunbar, he's, he's doing a fantastic job, man. I do think as far as Exeter is concerned, they still have to slide in and double up. A lot of penetration happening. They're able to get some shots in close. Now the Indians aren't hitting those shots. Some layups, some let's say inside of 12 feet. Uh, Exeter, even on the rebounding, uh, probably have to be a little more solid. They're doing a good job, but I think a little more solid as the Indians are getting second chances on their offensive glass. Well, this is usually Exeter's period, the third period, where they come out and really start putting the chokehold on the team. Let's see if they can come out of halftime and continue what they, they end in the half, that second period with. The Indians on the floor shooting their warm-ups. Exeter walking out onto the court now. Parents and fans give them a rousing applause of approval. Two minutes to go. I look over at the birthday boy, jubilant Jerry Gellif. Happy birthday, kid. Happy birthday, Jerry. Thank you, boys. We'll take a break. You're listening to the Exeter Sports Network. Penn State Health St. Joseph is here for all of your health and wellness needs. Whether it's our primary care and specialists throughout the region seeing you soon, our urgent care centers in Muhlenberg, Maiden Creek, and Straustown seeing you quickly, our emergency room in Burn Township seeing you now, or our on-demand app and walk-in lab, mammography, and imaging services seeing you anytime. We are ready when you need us to get you back to the health you need to live the way you want. Visit PennStateHealth.org to learn more. Other games on the docket tonight in the PIAA 5A Boys Basketball Championship. Radner faces off against Archbishop Ryan. Abington Heights plays the powerhouse Imhotep Charter. Of course, Exeter and Peters Township here in Cathedral Prep takes on Penn Hills. Some really good games going on, so let's Exeter finish this one off and let's continue to move on to next Monday. If Exeter does, in, in fact, the winner, we'll put it that way, the winner of this game plays the winner of the Cathedral Prep Penn Hills game. So certainly we will 
see if we can get a score there before we go off the air. I don't know what time that was scheduled for. Needless to say, Exeter has it to start. Reese Garvin will bring it in, mid-court far side. Eight minutes up on the clock. Exeter moving left to right. Inbound to Kevin Sims. He's got the dribble. Miller on him. He'll bring it back to the right side. He hits a cutting Zion Paschal. But ultimately, they're going to say a charge taken. Jake Ziegler able to keep his ground. He's all the way underneath the basket. How can that be a charge when he's that far underneath the basket? I believe that's going to be Zion's third. So he'll have to be careful there. The Indians bring it up. Dunbar has it. Take it back out to the top. Swing it to the right. Ziegler has it. Bring it to McCullough beyond three. He gives it up. Mills has the dribble. Cachese picks him up. He tries to drive around him, but Cachese just follows him. He'll give it to Miller. Miller trying to drive on Teddy Snyder. Nothing there. He puts a shoulder into him. Able to get it off the glass and scores. That was a very strong play by Miller. He, he really attacked the paint. He was very patient in getting that shot off. Reese Garvin will bring it in for Exeter. Gets it to Kevin Sens. He's got the dribble. Miller on him. Get it inside to Cachese. He looks for Zion Paschal. Back to Sens. Here's Zion putting up a three, and he drills it. Zion's second three on the night. He's got 15. It's a nine-point Exeter lead. 42-33, 6.50 to go here in the third. This is usually his period where he really starts warming up and say, I'm not ready to go home yet. Indians in the offensive set. Gives it to Mills. Mills to Ziegler. Bring it back to Miller. Trying to drive. He gets shut down. Bring it back out for a three. By Mills, no good. Rebounded Exeter. Zion Paschal has the dribble. Dunbar picks him up. Zion has it, sets him up, hands it to Kevin Sens. He's got the dribble. McCullough on him. Tries to break free. Gives it up to Zion. He tries to get it inside. It's tipped by Dunbar. Zion gets it back to Anthony in the middle. Off the glass, and he scores. Eight points for Anthony Cachese, an 11-point Exeter lead. Here's Miller, tries to drive, bring it outside for a three attempt from Cam Mills, and he hits it. Five points for him. Here's an Exeter turnover. Ziegler has it, can't get it, the first one to go, but he puts the second one back. And a timeout on the floor by Exeter. Yeah. Those are the things we can't have. Those simple turnovers right there just change the whole dynamic of the game when you're in control. That's one of those I'm scoring the prior bucket. Exeter turns it over on the inbound pass. The troubling thing there was Ziegler able to get his rebound. Missed the first shot, able to get the rebound. Nobody contested him. He puts it back up and yeah. scores. Yeah, because your big man went all the way back on the court and you turn the ball over in a bad position. So we're, we're definitely going to have to clean up that aspect and see where the defenders are coming from. And not, and not underneath your basket. 44-38 Exeter, 5-49. It was an 11-point lead, a 5-0 run by the Indians have cut it to six. Exeter coming out of the We need to play timeout. some more defense right now and slide our feet and be in the right position that we don't pick up another third or fourth foul. Reese Garvin brings it in. Ultimately gets it to Alex Kelsey. Tries to get it ahead to Zion Paschal, but it's a turnover. Dunbar gets it. Bring it near court to McCullough. They rotate it back around three. Here he's going to try and drive on Kelsey. Nothing there. Back it out for a three by Mickey Vaccarello. No good. And on the rebound, Zion Paschal is fouled. It's on the floor. They'll give it to McCullough. He, he just got to be... Uh, you're going to beat the press. Why are you trying to force the ball down the court? Reese Garvin inbounds it to Zion Paschal. He's got the dribble. Aspinel on him. Crosses midcourt. Sets it up. 
Bring it to the near side. Kevin sends. He decides to drive right away. A five-foot floater on the right side. It's good. Six points for Kevin Sins. An eight-point Exeter lead. 5.05 to go. Here's a drive in the lane from McCullough. Nothing there. He backs it to Aspinall. Dunbar has it. He spots up for a straightaway three. No good. They battle for it. Reese Garvin ends up with it. He'll take the dribble. He gets bumped by Aspinall. They try to double him. And ultimately, Reese Garvin throws it away in between Alex Kelsey and Zion Paschal. They need to come over and help him. There's, there's traveling over there, so there's just coming back and somebody being available on the other side to help him out. Exeter a little sloppy with the ball right now as far as bringing it up. 46-38 Exeter, 4.45 to go here in the third. The Indians in the offensive set. Aspinall on the near side going to try and drive on Garvin. He gives it up to Miller. Miller wasn't expecting it, but he takes it right to the rack. He scores, and he's fouled. He'll go to the line for one. 11 points for Nate Miller. And he awaits the ball for the free throw. <laughs> Miller's got the ball, a few dribbles. It's on the way, it's short. And Exeter Aiden Dauble runs it down. He's tied up. It's a quick call. <laughs> Nate Miller able to tie him up. So it's Indians ball on the possession. Miller will bring it in. Reese Garvin on him. Looking, looking, looking. Brings it in deep to McCullough. He's got it. Kevin Sens picks him up. Looking for a dribble left to right. Nothing there. Thinks about dribbling middle. Tries a spin move. Here's an eight-footer in the lane. No good. The Chasey can't get the rebound, and the Indians run it down. Here's Miller. Drives against Reese Garvin. Able to put it off the glass and scores. 13 points for Miller, and a four-point Exeter lead. Four minutes to go here in the third. Here's Zion Pasha looking to drive, but there was a travel, that's what I thought. It looked like he got the extra step in at the end. So it's another turnover for Exeter. Yeah, that's a good call. This is, this is not the way you wanna start this, this third period. We've got a timeout on the court, Exeter 46. The Indians, 42. It's the Exeter Sports Network. It's got a lot of power, huh? You make me feel like that. You make me feel like that. Only Valley Feed is the area's best place for pet food, supplies, and so much more. Featuring all the prime brands and your pet's favorite food. They also have a customer loyalty program that can pay you back in free pet food on many products, plus chew toys, room supplies, and snacks. Only Valley Feed carries a full line of bird food and suet, as well as coal and wood pellets to keep you warm this winter, which are available for delivery. All this in unmatched customer service. That's Only Valley Feed, 143 Cleaver Road in Only. On the web at OnlyValleyFeed.com. And on Facebook. Now let's go back to the game with the Exeter Sports Network. We are back. 3.56 to go here in the third. Exeter 46. Our, our, our good friend now, now rebounding on the defensive glass is coming back to bite us right now. And the bad turnovers. We're playing with sloppy basketball this period. We've got to clean this up. Exeter 46. Peters Township 42. But I agree with you there. It's one of those where Exeter just hasn't kept their composure. They've kind of fallen into the hands of the Indians when they press. They're not making sound decisions with the basketball, and it ultimately has resulted in that 11-point lead dwindling to four. So the Indians in the offensive set look for a backdoor to Dunbar. He puts it off the glass and scores. He's got 11. Make that 12. And while they try to bring the ball in, the official comes over, has a discussion. Good. 
least Garvin will bring it in to Kevin Sens. It's down to a two-point game. Kevin Sens has the ball and the dribble. Miller picks him up. Handed off to Zion Paschal. McCullough guarding him. He plays give and go. Back to Zion. Zion looking inside for Anthony. He corrals it, goes in. Ball knocked out of the way. Ultimately, the Indians come up with it. Here's a three attempt near side. And Jake Ziegler hits it. He's got five, and it's a one point Peters Township lead. Exeter in the offensive set. Get it to Zion Paschal on the left. He spots up. No good. Kevin Sens flies in for it. Battles, but it's off of him. It'll be Peters Township ball. Right now, like the wheels are falling off for Exeter. They've got to get some kind of leadership on the court and make better entry passes and stop trying to force everything. Yeah, I think it's a matter of pressing a little too hard right now. Dunbar has it, gets it to Vaccarello in the middle. He hands it to McCullough, who thinks about a three, then pulls it down. Sends on him, he backs up for a three. McCullough can't hit it. Pachese with the rebound, hands it to Zion Paschal. He's got the dribble. Crossing midcourt, left to right. Looks to set it up. Reese Garvin puts up a three. It's partially blocked. It's partially blocked and then ultimately tied up at the other end. They call possession and it's going to be Exeter ball. The fans are, the Indian fans are very raucous over here. Zion Paschal inbounds it to Kevin Sens. He gets it back. McCullough on him. He's trying to back him down. Goes in the lane. Double clutches. Can't get it to fall, but they'll call McCullough for the foul. Zion will go to the line for two. That may be ultimately what they needed, Ian. I'm going to try and talk over the fans, the Indians fans to my left, who are obviously not happy about that foul. At this point, we just got to start making our free throws. Let's make our free throws and make these shots count. There First one is up and good. We're tied at 47. Zion has one more. We just got to get the ball on the inside and don't force it to, because you can, the guards can get in there also. Zion's second is up and good. Okay. He's got 17 on the night. It's a one point Exeter lead. And the Indians in the offensive set. McCullough has the dribble, tries to go on, ultimately sends. They kick it back around. It ends in Miller's hands. Aiden Garble guarding him forces him out. He looks to go one on one against Dauble. The Dauble is going to be called for a foul on the drive. It's on the floor. That's Neither team in any penalty danger right now. Three team fouls on Exeter, two on Peters Township. Well, the referees are definitely let them play this half instead of, the, instead of all the foul fests in the first half. Indians bring it in. Vaccarello hands it back to McCullough. Tries to drive and go to his left or right, I should say. Nothing there. Plays a little give back and go with Vaccarello. There's a high screen. Throws up a floater, no good. Cachese goes up strong with the rebound. Hands it to Zion Paschal. He's got the dribble, looks over the situation. Get it to Kevin Sens. Kevin thinks about a three. Ultimately knocked away from him by Vaccarello. Here's McCullough, get it back to Dunbar for a three. No good, Anthony Cachese with the rebound. Out let it to Zion Paschal who ultimately stops free throw line jumper. No good, Dunbar with the rebound. 1.15 to go here in the third. Vaccarello gets it. Back out to Aspinel. Over to Dunbar for a three near side. No good, but the Indians get it back on the long rebound. Set it up again. Here's McCullough for a three. He hits it, and he's fouled by Zion Paschal. Exeter is just chasing the ball here. They're not, they're not playing any type of uh, form defense. They didn't. They ultimately didn't get the rebounds, which was the big problem. You gave them three opportunities to put the ball in the net. Ultimately, it gets back. It gets yeah. back to McCullough, who drills the three. 
he'll have a chance for a four-point play. But like you said, Darren, those rebounds are critical parts of the game that we have to get, and we're just not doing our jobs right now. It's up, but it's short. They yeah. run it down. It ends up in Reese Garvin's hands. Hands it to Kevin Sens. He's got the dribble. Donovan on him. He gets by him. He's looking to drive. Tries to get it to Shoot Anthony Capazzi, but it's too far. Here are the Indians trying to push the issue. McCullough gets it. He backs it up. He'll slow it down. 40 seconds to go. 50-48 Indians. McCullough directing traffic. Aiden Doble guards him. Bring it to Mills. He plays catch with McCullough. Doble out on McCullough again as he's got the dribble left to right. Down to 20 seconds to go. Bring it near side to Donovan. He hands it back to McCullough. And McCullough drives all the way to the lane. Anthony Cachese thought he had the block. They call him for the foul. That'll be his third. And it'll take McCullough to the line for two. They just got to find a way to get a, get a good stop here, next, next possession, get a good offensive possession, get a bucket, and keep this game where it's at, and go to the fourth quarter and try to win it that way. So McCullough to the line, he'll get two. Exeter all of a sudden, five fouls in the half. McCullough hits the first one. He's one of three from the line thus far. 13.6 on the clock. He's got his second. It's on the way. It bounces around and it's good. He's got 14. It's a four point Peters Township lead. Reese Garvin will bring it in. He gets it to Zion Paschal. He's got the dribble clock at 10 seconds. He'll set something up. Hands it to Reese Garvin, who thinks about it. Now he's going to take it to the hoop. He gets blocked as he tries to go up for a layup. Can't get it to fall, but he's fouled. He'll go to the line for two. Nice aggressive move there by Reese Garvin, and Ian, that's what Exeter needs. It's to control the ball and to attack the bucket. Control the ball and not try to force everything and get inside the paint, whether it's Kevin, whether it's Zion, whether, but do not try to force a pass in to Anthony. Not if it's not there. If it's there, take it. But if it's not there, don't. Reese shooting 76% from the free throw line. He hits the first. He'll get one more. Teddy Snyder comes into the game for Zion Paschal. You don't want Zion picking up a, an unnecessary foul with four and a half seconds left. So Reese will get one more. He's got the ball. It's on the way. It bounces around. It's good. It's a two-point Indians lead. They drive up. Here's a floater from McCullough in the lane. No good. And we have played three here in Belfont. It's Peters Township 52, Exeter 50. We'll be back with fourth quarter action. It's the Exeter Sports Network. Playing sports? Count on Penn State Health Sports Medicine to help you get back to doing what you love. Weekend warriors and pro athletes get complete care from our skilled sports medicine providers. They'll help you avoid future injuries with a treatment and recovery plan tailored to you. Same day and next day appointments available. Call Penn State Health Sports Medicine at 610-378-2255. That's 610-378-2255. Ian Exeter goes into halftime with the momentum and an eight-point lead, but they come out. The Indians put a press on. Exeter gets sloppy with the ball. They're outscored by 10, 21-11 in that third quarter, giving the Indians a two-point lead as we enter the fourth. That's one of the worst third periods that um, Exeter has played in, in a long time. Uh, 
they can't have this in the fourth quarter. They got to be clean over the ball and make better decisions on the defensive end. McCullough has the dribble right to left, gives it up. Passing it around beyond three. It's a weave. Here's McCullough trying to drive on Dobble. Can't get it. They run him out. Here's ultimately a long three. Oh God. Cam Mills, but there is ultimately the rebound by the Indians. And they're going to call Anthony Cachese for the foul. That'll be his third. It's the same and they're going to say it was in the act of shooting. So Cam Mills will go to the line for two. It's the same thing. I mean, we're not boxing the man out. We're not firing where the ball is, and we're not going to it. First free throw for Mills is good. We need somebody that's going to show some attitude on the defensive glass and get these rebounds. Few dribbles. Ball on the way. Mills hits the second. Two for two from the line. It's a four-point Indians lead. Zion Paschal forces the issue. Gets it back to Kevin Sens. He slows it down. Here's Zion. He looks to drive. Ultimately decides to put up a three. No good. They battle for it. Anthony Cachese runs it down. Tries to get it to a cutting Reese Garvin. Run down by Zion Paschal. Swing it left to Reese Garvin. No good on the three. Rebounded Mills for the Indians. And they bring it up the floor. McCullough, the field general for the Indians, gets it back. He looks to set up a drive. Tries to go left. Bank it back out for a three on the left-hand side. And Jake Ziegler drills it. He's got eight. And it's a seven-point Peters Township lead. Kevin Sens has the dribble. He stops, looks for Anthony. Here's Zion Paschal driving the lane. Able to go up and under and score. They need to stop right now. They, they, they have to get a defensive stop right now. Zion 17, make that 19 on the night with that bucket. Indians in the offensive set. McCullough trying to do something on Gobble. Nothing there, ultimately he gives it up. Ziegler looking, looking, brings it to Miller, top key. And ultimately it's a timeout. It's a 30 second timeout, we'll keep it right here. 57-52, Ian, we still don't see Exeter, and I'll say with their feet under them just yet. You see them hanging their shoulders a little bit. Ultimately, I don't know if they're tired. The, the rebounding certainly has favored the Indians tonight, and it really has hurt Exeter. Well, the thing is, the Indians are definitely subbing more, and they're keeping the guys a lot fresher. So if, if Exeter is tired, because they're not subbing enough on, on, on the offensive end. So that could be part of the problem. But they, you have to be willing to, you know where the rotations are. You have to be tough enough and fight through this. 57-52. Fouls will be an issue. Six against Exeter, only three against the Indians. You, you take a look at Anthony Cachese's arms, and they're all marked up. Yeah, they're, they're all scratched up, but there's no fouls. It's one of those, they almost don't even know how to call against him. He's just so big. So the Indians will bring it in from the far side. Bring it in to McCollum. They have more than enough time to make this lead up. Absolutely. Alex Kelsey on McCollum. Tries to fight through, they double him. Ultimately, Kevin Sens comes up to double and it goes off of McCullough as he tries to gather it back in. So it'll be Exeter ball. Nice hustle there on the back end by Kevin Sens, forcing the turnover. Reese Garvin will bring it into Alex Kelsey. Dunbar guarding him. Kelsey has the dribble, gives it up to Zion Paschal. The pick up high, here's a three attempt. No good. Dunbar has the rebound. Here they'll call Anthony. He went crashing into Dunbar, so that'll be his fourth. Oh, they actually gave the foul to Reese Garvin. That'll be his first. And that'll put Exeter in the one-on-one. -on -one. Well, right now they need to get a, get a rebound. I will say, just looking at it from my viewpoint, the fouls have been going against Exeter. They have not been calling some fouls as far as slapping fouls against the Indians. 
And as we saw in the last game, the challenge becomes if the officials don't take control of that, the players will. It, that's how the games get out of control by not being, but by not keeping the, the fouls even and everything else balanced on the, on the defense and the offensive end. Coach Ashcroft has a discussion with the official, then gives some instructions to his players, probably as far as how they're calling certain things. So Dunbar will go to the line shooting too. Oh, excuse me, a one and one. Rebound, rebound. First is up and good. Dunbar will get one more. It's on the way and good. 59-52 and as Exeter brings it in, ultimately the Indians knock it out. It's a seven point Peters Township lead. Reese Garvin brings it in from the near side, gets it to Alex Kelsey, he's got the dribble. He's going to try to take it right to the rack. Can't get it to go, but the foul, he'll go to the line for two. Good aggressive play, Alex Kelsey there. Was able to get a step on the defender. Took it all the way to the rack. The foul on Nicky Vaccarello. These free throws are very critical to this game. He's going to have to settle his mind and make these free throws. They ultimately give the foul to Dunbar. That's his second, and Alex hits the first free throw. Peters Township fans getting a little loud, slamming the bleachers next to me. The second free throw up, no good. Anthony Cachese gets the rebound, can't put it home. Reese Garvin can't corral it, and Peters Township has it. Here's McCullough driving against Alex Kelsey, decides to hold up. He backs it out. 5.30 to go, it's a six point Indians lead. They try a high pick, ultimately McCullough still has the dribble. Back it back out to Ziegler, McCullough gets it back on the left side. He's got the dribble, Kelsey on him. Ultimately, Kelsey knocks it away. He's able to get it back with the steal. Hands it off to Zion Pasha. He goes up, but Denbar blocks it. That's one of those, I don't understand the Superman. You're 6'4", he's 5'10", and he block it. Spared the Superman call. Hey, hey, it was a good play by you, man. He was already standing there. I mean, come on. So anyway, Zion Pasha will bring it in. McCullough will guard him. He's looking, looking. Gets it to Anthony Cachese. Goes up strong. Can't get the shot to fall. He battles. Gets it up again. It won't fall, but it'll go to the line for two. Ian, one thing, unfortunately, Anthony has really been struggling with getting it to drop inside. Yeah, he's tonight. having a hard time dropping tonight. But, but, they, but they're grabbing on his arm. They're pulling on all kind of different body parts. It's really hard to get a shot up when everybody's dragging all over you. It's Nate Miller's second. Anthony on the line shooting the first of two. Mm. He struggled from the line all year long. Unfortunately, it continues. He misses the first. Well, we just need to get one right now. Just need this one. Get into a five-point game, and let's play some defense. He's got the ball. A couple dribbles. He'll take a look. It's on the way. Take second one. one's good. Take a I can find where he is on my score sheet. He's got nine. Here are the Indians forcing the issue. Exeter with the full court press. They're able to break it. Miller has the dribble. They try to double team him. He hands it off to McCullough. Reese Garvin goes out to guard him. Ultimately looking and McCullough tries to drive. He literally gives Anthony Cachese a kung fu kick. And it's a turnover that Kevin Sens ends up with. Bring it near side. To Zion Paschal, he brings it out. He's going to set the offensive up. Tries to drive, spots up for a 20-footer, no good. Anthony Cachese with the rebound, but they're going to call the foul on Jake Ziegler. Ooh, wow. Anthony had it. 
went to put the ball back up. He couldn't get it to fall. Wow. Um, Ziegler I, with the foul. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll say that's a tough one. They were battling. They were, I, I thought that was the other way. But hey, so they they call the ball on the the foul on the floor. It was not in the act of shooting. So it's the 16 foul for Peters Township. Exeter brings the ball in. A long lob to Zion Pasha. He loses the ball temporarily, gathers it back, gets it to Zion. Uh, excuse me, Reese Garvey. Get it to Anthony Cachese. Dunbar falling all over him. No call. Anthony trying to get inside. Back to Reese for a three. No good. Now, and that one, I'm going to say that one was not a foul. Dunbar moving towards the basket. Anthony went straight up. I'm sorry. This one is not a foul. That one, bad call on the referee at a critical time. Anthony went straight up. There was no push off whatsoever. So that one I have a problem with. A little acting on the back end may have gotten the call, but Dunbar will get two for a one and one. Box. Dunbar puts the first one up and it's good. He's got 15, he'll get one more. That one's short. CT! Oh my God! I'll, ultimately, I'll tell you what, Cam Mills battling inside was able to get the rebound, and as they scramble, ultimately calling the foul. Now, here's the thing. If they're gonna call a foul on the other end on the rebound, then they have to call the foul there because he comes over the top. Yeah, this is... Mm. So, so through the whole thing, Nate Miller will go to the line for a one and one. Nine team fouls, so not on the double bonus yet. First free throws up and good. But we had the rebound in our hand two times, and then we give the ball back up. We've got to be stronger than that. Come on. Nate Miller has the second free throw. It's on its way, and it's good. Still got time, let's go. 62-54, four minutes to go here in the fourth. Exeter in the offensive set. Kevin Sens looks to drive on Miller, gets shut down, bring it back to Zion Paschal. Puts up a three, no good, but he's gonna be fouled. And ultimately he'll go to the line for his free throws. They call the foul on McCullough. I don't understand. They were all the fouls, but... As soon as Exeter get one, that wasn't a foul. Come on, you, you gotta be, 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 at least be fair. So they call the fourth foul on McCullough. Is that a four or a 30? I didn't see, Jerry. It's going to you, 348 in the fourth, 62-54. Indians will be right back. It's the Exeter Sports Network. State Health St. Joseph is here for all of your health and wellness needs. Whether it's our primary care and specialists throughout the region seeing you soon, our urgent care centers in Muhlenberg, Maiden Creek, and Straustown seeing you quickly, our emergency room in Burn Township seeing you now, or our on-demand app and walk-in lab, mammography, and imaging services seeing you anytime. We're ready when you need us to get you back to the health you need to live the way you want. Visit PennStateHealth.org to learn more. Now let's get back to the game of the rest of the sports network. 3.48 to go here in the fourth, 62-54, Peters Township. Coming out of the timeout, this is one of those where they're critical. Zion will have three. He was fouled on the three, so he'll have three free throws. Yeah, we, we, these are these are very important free throws right now for the 348 mark. You got to make all three of them. Zion hitting the free throws, 70 percent on the year. He's got the ball, a few dribbles, takes a look. First one's on the way, and short, no good. Something we talked about pregame, 
the Indians very good at the free throw line. So Exeter is going to have to step up. The Indians have been hitting those one and ones as of late. Yeah. Zion's second no good. Yeah, this is a tough one, an opportunity to cut it to five. Yeah, that's and, huge. and if he hits it, it's seven. Yeah. He's got a few dribbles, the ball on the way, and the last one good. Zion's got 20 on the night. They have, have a full court press. The Indians break it, get it to Dunbar near side. He gets it back out to Miller. They ultimately have some nice passing underneath. Cam Mills goes up for a layup under the basket. He can't get it. They'll call Reese Garvin for the foul. Taking a look, it's going to be Reese's. Oh, they yeah, actually give it to Zion. Zion. That Zion. That'll be his fourth. Fifth. Is that? Yeah, that is his fifth. They didn't update. They're flashing it on the screen as his fourth. But he does come out of the game. So he fouls out with 20. They still have it as his fourth. Uh, they just updated it. They did? Uh, well, they flashed five, so we'll see what they do here. Needless to say, the first free throw, Exeter now in the double bonus. Yeah. We have to get this rebound. First free throw from Cam Mills is no good. He's got the dribble. It's on its way, that one short. Let's go. Kevin Let's Sens gets that rebound. Push. Hit that Aiden. Here's Aiden Dauber with a three. They scramble for it. Ultimately, it ends up as a tie, and Exeter will have possession. So now I see Exeter scrambling a little bit. They need to settle it down, but they're a little hurried. They still got 323. It's only a seven-point lead or deficit. So they just need to kind of get it under control and play their offense. Yeah, they, they still have plenty of time in this game, so they just... Keep attacking the basket. Kevin Sen drives go. off the glass and scores. He's got eight. Exeter with the full court press. The Indians try to break it. They do. And ultimately a timeout from Peters Township. They're going to say it's a full timeout. Six, excuse me, 307 to go here in the fourth. 62-57 Indians. We'll be right back. It's the Exeter Sports Network. Selling or buying a house? Call Mikey LeBron of EXP Realty. Mikey is a full-service realtor dealing in residential, business, and investment realty services. Whether it is local, statewide, national, or even international, Mikey can fulfill your real estate needs. Service to his customers is his prime focus, and that is what Mikey in the top 15% of all real estate agents in the nation. Contact Mikey LeBron at 484-772-5106 or on the web at myagentmikey.com. This is the Exeter Sports Network on Jerry Gellif Media. 3.07 to go here in the fourth. A five-point Exeter deficit. The Indians will bring it in near side, midcourt. A little inside their own offensive zone. Coach Ashcroft barking out instructions. Ball in. Miller has it. Looking, 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 looking. Nothing there. Finally gets it in. And, all, and as Cam Mills dribbles, ultimately... I'm going to guess that it was knocked out of bounds by Exeter. It actually looked like it could have been a foul as far as he was bodied up. But no foul called. The Indians bring it in. Anthony Cachese really hustling. The ball is loose. Alex Kelsey comes up with it. Get it back to Cachese. He goes in, scores, and he's fouled. That's one of those scramble on the floor. Anthony Cachese really aggressive. On the defensive end, they don't call anything. 
And as Exeter on the fast break find Anthony Cachese underneath, he puts it off the glass and scores, and he goes to the line for one to make this a two-point game. That was a good defense. I mean, he was just sliding his feet up top of the key. I mean, he might have had a little bit of body, but I don't think it was enough to disrupt the, defense, the offensive player. Anthony's free throw is up and good. Anthony, 12 points on the night. The Indians inbound it. We've got 2.50 to go. It's a two-point Peters Township lead. And here's Dunbar. <laughs> Dunbar trying to get it to McCullough. It certainly looked like he airmailed it, but they're saying it was off of Exeter. I didn't see that ball move. The ref disagrees with you, William. Yeah. Uh, the ref disagrees. He's giving it to the Indians. Who did he deflect off of? Well, Alex cut the lane there. So if anybody, it would have been him. So the Indians get the ball in, but ultimately they triple team, and they allow Nate Miller to go all the way to the basket uncontested. He's got 15. Here's Alex Kelsey at the other end. He can't get it to fall, and it's an Indians rebound. He reaches in, thinks he gets all ball, but they call the foul on Alex. So we'll take a look. Alex has fouled out of the game. That's his fifth. Teddy Snyder will come in for him. That's a tough one. You bring three guys out top, but nobody back home in order to pick up the D. Yeah, yeah. Like, you, can't, you can't have three guys in a trap and then not, no one in the back end. And I'll say this. I, I'm going to say I question that. It's only a two-point game at that point. It's 62-60. So at that point, play your defense. I, I, you don't have to be over aggressive yeah, there because you gave up that easy. Yeah, body. absolutely right there. And I mean, you, you you're down two. You play solid defense with plenty of time on the clock, and then and then you. So Mills ends up missing the first. The second one, no yeah, good. Down. And he runs down. down. He runs down his own miss. Un it's the rebound. If something happens where Exeter doesn't pull this game out, we can look at the rebounding tonight as to a reason that it occurred. Those, those offensive rebounds, I, Peter's Township is killing us on the offensive glass. So Nate Miller will have two free throws. The first one, no good. Exeter in the double bonus. So Miller will have one more. Takes a look, it's in the air, the second one good. Eight points for Miller. It's a five point Indians lead. Here is Kevin Sens driving the length of the floor a little out of control, gets it up with the left hand. Can't get it to fall, but he's fouled. We'll see if the foul is on Cam. Is that who they called it, Cam Mills? Nope, they gave it to Tom Aspinall. That's his Kevin, third. Kevin needs to play that way the whole game. And uh, you cannot wait until the fourth quarter to start showing up. It's too, be aggressive. Kevin awaiting the ball from the officials. Some discussions going on. He toes the line, a couple dribbles. It's yeah. on the way, it's good. Yes, sir. Let's go, make your free throws, come on. Yeah. Yeah. Kevin has one more coming. There's still plenty of time in this game. Make your free throws, play solid defense, and get the ball back. Second up and good. Come on. 10 points on the night for Kevin. It's a three point Indians lead, 220 to go here on the fourth. The Indians break the press, bring it near side. Ultimately, McCullough has it. They try to double him. It's tipped, but it falls into Dunbar's hands. They're just throwing it around now, trying to stay away from the double team. Here's ultimately a break from Nate Miller, and as he tries to get it to the near side, it's too slow. The, the ball's actually too low. Goes off Jake Ziegler's hands and out of bounds. You, you do not need a three-pointer right now. Just attack the basket like you've been doing and see if you can get foul and make the layup. The Exeter defense there playing a huge part. They force a pass. He was actually all alone. He probably would have put up uh, close to a three if uh, he was able to corral it. 
Exeter inbounds it. Kevin Sims has the dribble. Gets a pick up high from Anthony. Back it out to Aiden Gorble. He's looking to drive. He gets stopped. Here's Kevin Sims driving to the hoop. With the left hand off the glass, he scores and he's fouled. He'll go to the line for one. Attack the basket and keep on playing that way until they stop you. He's got the opportunity to tie this up with 1.47 to go. Yeah, it's like you saw the future. Listen, up. This, the basketball is not complicated. It's just a simple game. You are probably one of the best players on the court. Be that guy and attack the basket and put pressure on them. Cam Mills with his second foul. Here's Kevin from the line. It's on the way and good. We are tied at 65. 147 to go here on the fourth. Long pass to Dunbar. He goes in, kicks it back out to Miller for three. No good. Anthony Cachese with the Kevin rebound. Outlets to Kevin Sens. He holds on to it. 130 to go and a timeout on the floor. 131 to go. 65 all. We'll be back with the rest of the fourth. It's the Exeter Sports Network. Playing sports? Count on Penn State Health Sports Medicine to help you get back to doing what you love. Weekend warriors and pro athletes get complete care from our skilled sports medicine providers. They'll help you avoid future injuries with a treatment and recovery plan tailored to you. Same day and next day appointments available. Call Penn State Health Sports Medicine at 610-378-2255. That's 610-378-2255. The fourth quarter, we are at Bald Eagle Area High School. 131 on the clock. Ian tied at 65. Here's Exeter's run. This is Exeter's run. You need to get that ball in Kevin's hand's hand so he can be going downhill. And if it collapse on him, he find an open man and give him a pass. But he needs to continue to play that the way he's playing to finish this game off for Exeter to have this comeback to be complete. So Exeter will inbound the ball far side, just beyond midcourt. Reese Garvin will have it. The Indians will full court press it, but ultimately Kevin sends bounces out. They try to double him. And Kevin, in trying to get it to Reese Garvin, throws it too high and out of bounds. Bad time for a turnover. That's one of those you have to stay under control and see that pass, and it's a little wild. We'll see if it hurts him. Yeah, that's, that's a critical wrong part to turn the ball over at this time of the game. Both teams in the double bonus. 1.15 to go on the clock here in the fourth. Teddy Snyder comes out on McCullough. And a timeout from Peters Township. Take a look to see if it's going to be a full timeout. 1.12 to go here in the fourth. We're tied at 65. We'll be back. It's the Exeter Sports Network. Selling or buying a house? Call Mikey LeBron of EXP Realty. Mikey is a full-service realtor dealing in residential, business, and investment realty services. Whether it is local, statewide, national, or even international, Mikey can fulfill your real estate needs. Service to his customers is his prime focus, and that is what Mikey in the top 15% of all real estate agents in the nation. Contact Mikey LeBron at 484-772-5106 or on the web at at myagentmikey.com. The Indians will bring the ball in on the errant pass by Sens. If I was Coach Ashcroft, I wouldn't be playing that far up because it's a tie game. Mm. Okay. Anthony Cachese knocks the ball away and ultimately as Cam Mills tries to get it back, he's stepped on the inline. 
So it's a turnover. Great defense, Anthony Cachese. Exeter will bring it in far side, just beyond midcourt. Kevin has to have the ball in his hand, but he has to make great decisions right now. They're going to try to probably double team him to get the ball out, but he has to make a good decision on the ball. Kevin Sims has the dribble. One minute to go here in the fourth. There's a pickup high. Here's a jumper from Kevin Sims. Bounces around. Anthony Cachese gets the rebound. Can't get it to fall. And as they battle for it, it's going to be possession. It'll be Indians ball. <sighs> Anthony's having a real hard time with these layups dropping in the basket. It's like a limbs cover in the basket. I'm not going to say that necessarily was the shot Exeter was looking for. Kevin sends on the wing left, putting up an off-balance shot. I fully agree with you. Take the ball to the basket like he's been doing. So the Indians have it. 45 seconds on the clock. They... Full court press. Haven't gotten it through yet. McCullough loses it. He's tied up. Are they going to say that they're going to give him the timeout first? And they're going to say it's a 10-second violation on the Indians, and it'll be Exeter ball. Right. They didn't get the ball over midcourt. Great defense from Exeter. They ultimately tie it up, which would give them possession anyway. And ultimately, Exeter is given the ball. So Reese Garvin will bring it in from the near side. 40.8 seconds on the clock. They get it back to Kevin Sens. He's got the dribble. Ultimately bringing it across midcourt. We'll take it to the left side. Reese Garvin has it. 30 seconds on the clock. Kevin Sens now has it. He's looking to drive. Ultimately, he'll pull the ball down with the dribble. Bring it near side to Aiden Dauble. They look a little inside, but give it to Kevin Sens. He's got the dribble. Oh, and Kevin Sens throws it away. Reese Garvin bounced out. Kevin Sens thought he was coming out for it. Throws it away again. 13 seconds on the clock, and the Indians will have it. He needs to hold the ball. So here's McCullough. 10 seconds on the clock. The dribble right to left. Teddy Snyder picks him up. A pickup high. Looking to dribble. He gets the ball knocked away. It's on the floor. It's loose. Ultimately, they'll tie it up. But the buzzer sounds. They're going to see if they give him a timeout. It looked like Coach Ehrman was trying to get a timeout. Literally, as the buzzer sounded, the officials talking it over. The one is shaking his head. I think but even, even if he calls time, how much time? And they're no saying that's out. it. That's it. We have played 4-4 to a 65 all time. So we will take a quick break. Or let, let's say it's a 30-second call here. So 65 all Jerry. Jerry, it's all yours. Jubilant Jerry Gellif. It's the Exeter Sports Network. Penn State Health St. Joseph is here for all of your health and wellness needs. Whether it's our primary care and specialists throughout the region seeing you soon, our urgent care centers in Muhlenberg, Maiden Creek, and Straustown seeing you quickly, our emergency room in Burn Township seeing you now, or our on-demand app and walk-in lab, mammography, and imaging services seeing you anytime. We are ready when you need us to get you back to the health you need to live the way you want. Visit PennStateHealth.org to learn more. Back to the game on the Exeter Sports Network. We are back. Ian having a discussion with a disgruntled Indians fan. <laughs> he's fun. No, he's fun. He's fun. He's cordial. Oh, I've been, <laughs> been, 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 been listening to him all game. Yeah. <laughs> I all right, so we will tip it off. I, I, need, I need Kevin to be that guy right now. I mean, he's had the ball in his hand multiple times in the fourth quarter, and he's made not the right decision. Four minutes on the clock. The Indians get the tip. Here's Dunbar putting up a three from straight away. No good. Kevin sends with the rebound. 
He sets it up, looking for Reese Garvin on the right. Sees the get it inside to Anthony Cachese. They try to double down. Anthony with a nice move inside and scores. 14 on the night for Anthony Cachese, a two-point Exeter lead. Here's McCullough trying to drive. He gets in the lane. Reese Garvin looked like he blocked it, but they're going to call him coming over with the body. So they'll call him with the push foul. They'll say it's in the act of shooting, and McCullough, give him credit, he's been able to drive to the bucket all night long. Wow, um, I thought he had a good block on that. I thought he came over with a clean block on that play. McCullough's first up and good. That was Reese's fourth foul. No, that was his second. Se second. No, on the right-hand side. Oh, wait, player two. Oh, wait a minute. They're messed up when they put it up there. All right. Yeah, they're, they're putting up the player who's actually shooting the free throws. All right, so we hit the second. We're, again, tied at 67. 3.15 to go. Here's Kevin Sens driving the left side of the lane. Puts it up soft. It doesn't fall. The Indians have the rebound. Miller with the dribble. Going left to right on Reese Garvin. He bodies him up. Give it to Vaccarello. Tries to drive baseline. Nothing there. Bring it out to Dunbar. He gives a stutter step. Floater in the lane, and it falls. That was a good shot. Dunbar, 16 on the night. It's a two-point Indians lead. 2.40 to go here in overtime. They get it inside to Anthony Cachese. He gets knocked down. The, the ball goes off of him, and it's Indians ball. And Anthony can't believe it. Wow. It was draped all over him. They got their legs tangled up. Anthony went down. And here the Indians bring the ball in. McCullough gets it in the middle. Cachese comes over the top, knocks it away. And that's going to be his fifth. He tried to be aggressive on the play, probably out of frustration for the non-call on the other end. He'll foul out. Jaden Ware will come in the game. Wow. So Anthony will take a seat. And that was one of those that looked like he got all ball coming over the top. Yeah. It's just, been, it's just been a tough game. Jake Ziegler on the line. First one's up and good. It's a three-point Peters Township lead. 2.29 to go here in overtime. There's a few dribbles. Ball in the air and he hits the second. So a four-point. Peters Township leads 71-67, 2.29 to go here in overtime. Aiden Dauber will bring the ball in full court. He'll get it to Kevin Sens. He's got the dribble. Looking to drive, he steps back. His foot's on the line for a two, no good. Ultimately rebounded by Vaccarello. Arsenal on the, Aspinel, I should say. They ultimately are in the offensive set, passing it around. McCullough ultimately has it. Looking to drive, he gets by, but the ball's knocked loose. It's on the floor. It goes off the Indians. It'll be Exeter ball. So a scramble there. Goes off of the Indians. And Exeter has it. Just Aiden Darbo will bring it in. They still have two minutes and, and six seconds to go. I'm like, it's pl still plenty of time in this game to finish this game. Coach Ashcroft and jubilant Jerry Gelliff, the birthday boy, says keep it right here. It's a full timeout, so we'll have plenty to talk about. Yeah, well, you know, I, I think we were talk about maybe we got three players fouled out. It's a no good. Yeah, that's a bad situation. That we're in right it now. makes it tough, yes, no doubt. And, and two of your leaders, Zion Paschal, uh, of course, Anthony Cachese. So, so the heart and soul that got you, I don't want to say got you here, but played a big part of it. Uh, sitting on the bench right now, it must be tearing him up. Yeah. You would think. Yeah, I looked over at his parents, and, and they are, are both yeah. no, disconsolate over there. 
it's a tough it's a tough situation to be in right now when you have no control of the outcome of this game. So right now you gotta hope that your teammates can get a shot, good shot, make a bucket, and play some solid defense to get you to the next game. So we are coming out of timeout. 71-67 Indians, 206 to go here in overtime. Exeter will have it. On the floor right now for Exeter, Aiden Gobble, Reese Garvin, Jaden Ware, Kevin Sens, Teddy Snyder. Inbounded to Kevin Sens, he's got the dribble. You don't need a three-pointer, you just need to get a good shot. Aiden Gobble out there, he tries to get it to Reese Garvin, who puts up a three, no good, they battle, Jaden Ware with the putback. Let's go, young fella, Come on. huge bucket. It's a two-point game. Freshman Jaden Ware putting it back. Ultimately on defense now. The Indians throwing it around a little bit, but they still have it. Bring it to Miller near side. They get it ultimately inside. I'm surprised that wasn't a travel by Aspinall. 125 to go. Finally a foul against Nate Miller. Looking to see, I think they gave that one to Teddy Snyder. That'll be his first. We need a miss shot. We need a miss shot right now. So the double bonus. So he'll get two. We need a miss. First free throw for Nate Miller. Up and good. Like you said, they're very good at the free throw line. So put him at the free throw line is just going to make everything easier for them. He's got one more, a few dribbles. He takes a look, it's on its way. Get off, get Bounces off. around, no good. Oh, Reese Garvin has the rebound. Hands it to Kevin Sens with the dribble. He's gonna look, bounces it to Reese for a three. It's up, no good. Dunbar with the rebound and he's got the dribble. Get it to the far right side. They bring it back. They're throwing the ball around a little bit. They get it to Vaccarello near side. He drives to the bucket, backs it back out. They're going to call a foul. And I'm taking a look to see who it's going to be on. Reese Garvin. I'll tell you what, it looked like Vaccarello was a little out of control under the bucket there when he bounced it back outside, but they called a foul anyway. <laughs> Vaccarello's first, no good. 101 to go, a three-point Indians lead. Vaccarello will have one more. Get off, get off. And that's no good. <laughs> Kevin Sens strong with the rebound. He's got the dribble. We're under a minute to go. He stops, puts up a three, and he hits it. <laughs> Kevin Sens with his first three on the night, and what a time to hit it. 16 points, we're tied at 72. They're throwing the ball around. Ultimately, they turn it over to Exeter. Kevin Sens has it. He's driving the lane. There should be a foul. There's not, but he gets the rebound and puts it back in. Here's a three from Dunbar. It's short. No good. Aiden Dahl with the rebound. Kevin Sens gets it. He's fouled. And what a turn what an absolute turn of events. Exeter getting four quick points to take a two-point lead. And now Kevin Sens will go to the line for two. Let's go. Way to come up here. That is some huge shots by this kid. I mean, he has all the talent in the world. He just has to keep continuing to show it. First free throw from Sens is up and good. Both teams getting sloppy there. Exeter a little bit earlier in the quarter. Now the Indians kind of long passes and what have you. Ultimately not able to control the, the ball or the clock. And Exeter getting some quick buckets. The second one no good. Rebounded by the Indians. 15 seconds to go. It ends up in McCullough's hands and Coach Ehrman calls timeout. 14.8 seconds to go here in the fourth. Exeter 75, Peters Township 72, we're going to keep it right here, Ian, 
I'll tell you what, when the fact that it got to overtime, give Exeter credit because in that second half, they didn't have the energy. They were getting out rebounded, and, and the Indians were putting it to them. Yeah, they were flat out getting outplayed, Darren. They were flat out getting outplayed in other aspects of the game defense, offense, now rebounding, turning the ball over, doing the silly things. If they can find a way to pull this game out, it will be. That tough-minded set that Kate Ashcroft has been preaching to them all season. And Kevin Sands, he has really showed up in this in this overtime. Give credit to the Exeter defense as well. Uh, obviously, very, very aggressive with the full-court press. It's had a few turnovers, of course, leading to those fast-break buckets. Mm -hmm. And now Exeter, 75-72, a three-point lead. The Indians will inbound the ball in their own offensive set. Nate Miller will do the honors. Teddy Snyder will be on him. Really solid defense and covering this three-point line and making sure these guys do not get a clean look. And make sure you have your hand up, close out. So Miller has it. He's looking, gets it to McCullough. Clock running. Ten seconds. Mills trying to get a uh, Miller trying to get around. Reese Garvin couldn't do it, and they've got to call timeout. So nice defense, Exeter didn't allow the drive, didn't allow an entry pass. I mean, that switch out by Reese on that, cut, cut that shot right off because he was coming off of that to get a clean look and Reese just came and covered him over. Very good defense on, on the Exeter's part. So that offensive play takes half the time off the clock, 7.2 now, and Ian, it's just a matter of they're already in the bonus, so you've got to be careful there. But at that point, do not foul the three. You do not want to foul the three-point shooter and can make that shot and get the chance to get to the free throw line and win the game. So you have to be smart. Close out, hand in his face, and play solid defense. You still want to defend Dunbar. You know he's got a sweet shot, and a number of others do as well. So Exeter has to play perimeter. And at that point, you can see here, Exeter comes out of the timeout with some extra mojo running onto the floor. So Nate Miller will bring it in far side within their own zone. Teddy Snyder on him. Kevin Sins matches up with Dunbar. Jaden Ware, the freshman, on Brendan McCullough. Yeah, they have to be talking on defense and let everybody know what they're doing. They try to throw it cross court. They do. They get it back to Dunbar for a three. It's nowhere close. They're going to say it was tipped. It goes out of bounds. 3.3 seconds on the clock. So another half of the clock taken with that play. That was great defense recovery by Kevin to come out and close out on, that, on, that, on, on Dunbar on that jump shot. The Indians will bring it in. McCullough has it to the left of the basket. Jaden Ware there. He's looking, looking, gets it deep to Nate Miller. Puts up unbelievable comeback in the fourth quarter to tie it. They managed to outlast the Indians in overtime. And they go on to the semifinals, 75-72. Friends, we will talk about all the details Darren, I just want to say, if folks want to stay with our post-game show, I think they're going to dump out of the video. Okay. So go to our audio stream. Go find the audio stream. It's a Joey sighting. I didn't, didn't realize, realize, I didn't realize Joey was here. All right. Let's go to break. Joey gives us a chance to catch our breaths. 75-72 Exeter. We'll be back. It's the Exeter Sports Network. Kevin. 